Hi guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I had to put on my reaching hat. Hear me out. Hi. Thank you for clicking. Today we're going to be talking about Vanessa Guillen. She is the Fort Hood soldier that has been missing for two months now. And some people are thinking that there might be a military cover up here, but we're going to get into all that in a second. But first, I need to give my thanks. I want to thank all my subscribers, old, new, whatever, every single one of you. Thank you so much for subscribing. It means the world to me and I can't thank you enough for your support. And if you are new here, yeah, hello. This is me. I wear a tinfoil hat. I talk about true crime and conspiracies and a lot of times both. And this is what I do. <laughs> if that interests you, please subscribe, join the tinfoil family, and we can all jump down the rabbit hole together. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the video. Who is Vanessa Guillen? Vanessa Guillen is one of six children. She was born and raised around the Houston area. She graduated in the top 15% of her class, and she said that she wanted to join the military ever since she was 10 years old. Her mother, Gloria, actually didn't want her to enlist. She said, I cried a lot because I didn't want her to enlist because in my mother's heart, I already feared that I would suffer. Talk about a mother's intuition. So, Vanessa, she went against her mother's wishes and she ended up enlisting in the military. Now, Vanessa's military occupational specialty is 91F, which makes her a small arms and artillery repairer. She is a very pretty girl. Here's a picture of her. She is Hispanic. She's 5'2", 126 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. And she has some identifying tattoos like a mountainscape on her arm. As I said earlier, Vanessa has been missing for two months. She went missing on the base, which is the first thing that everyone is going, huh? She went missing on the base? And that brings me to the events leading up to her disappearance. According to Vanessa's mother, Gloria, Vanessa was acting strange in the days leading up to her disappearance. Her mother had noticed something different. So she asked her about it and Vanessa told her that she hadn't been getting much sleep lately, which was very uncommon for her. After her mother pressed her a little bit more, Vanessa confided in her and let her know that she was actually being sexually harassed by her sergeant slash supervisor. She mentioned an incident where she was taking a shower and he walked in on her naked. She also said that he would follow her when she would run and basically was constantly behind her, following her and making her feel uncomfortable. The mother naturally said, you should file a complaint upon him. And she actually even said that, tell me his name and I'll file the complaint. But Vanessa said, no, I don't want to file a complaint because there are other girls who have been harassed by the same sergeant and they complained and nothing happened. Nobody believed them. So don't worry about it, mom. I'm going to take care of it myself. She never actually gave her mother the name and she never filed a complaint. There's no record of her filing anything. But three weeks after this conversation, Vanessa went missing. Vanessa also told her mother that she believed the base was quote evil and that she was afraid. It all started when Vanessa stopped answering her phone. Her mother tried calling her, she wasn't answering, and that's when Gloria raised the alarm bells. She was then told by military officials that the last time anyone had seen Vanessa was on April 22nd between the hours of 11.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. and that she was seen near her barracks. More specifically, she was seen in the parking lot of her regimental engineer squadron headquarters 3rd Cavalry Regiment at Fort Hood. When she was last seen, she was wearing black Nike shoes, a black Nike t-shirt, and purple workout leggings. So things start to get a little bit blurry after this because when I was doing my research, 
I couldn't figure out if it was a witness or witnesses because I found two different articles. One said eyewitness, the other one said witnesses had seen her. So I'm not sure, so I just wanted to let you guys know that I don't really know if it was one or more people who saw her the last time she was supposedly seen. But whoever it is that witnessed her and told officials, they said that they didn't actually interact with her, they just saw her. And this next thing adds to the suspicions that people have about the situation and that is that there is no video security footage of Vanessa anywhere particularly near the armory remember she was in the arms repair you would think that a military base would have cameras around the armory you would think reminds me so much of when I did my Jeffrey Epstein video and all of a sudden there were no cameras or the cameras weren't working or couldn't find them and then all of a sudden the cameras were found. I wonder if something like this is going to happen where the footage magically appears. But anyway, one of the things that has made people believe that she definitely has not gone wherever she is, if she is alive, willingly, is the fact that she left very important items at the barracks. Those items are her ID, car key, room key, wallet. However, her phone is not there and her phone is missing. So five days after she was last seen, so now it's April 27, the military and the police, they announced that they're doing a joint search looking for Vanessa. Vanessa's family started doing rallies her mother, her sister, the community, they were doing rallies, trying to bring awareness to this case, let people know that she's missing, and basically get the word out to look for Vanessa. It was around this point where rumors started swirling about a cover-up and weird things about the investigation, and the family was complaining that they weren't getting the information that they felt that they deserved. So the mother, she's been very outspoken. Gloria, been totally outspoken. And she has been letting it be known that her daughter said that she was being sexually harassed before she went missing and that this, the mother believes, is a huge piece of the puzzle. In the beginning, the military denied any of this. They said that they haven't found any evidence of sexual misconduct and they have not heard anything about this. There hasn't been a report. As we know, Vanessa never did actually speak up about it. So they were pretty much saying, no, this has nothing to do with it. That would soon change, but we'll get to that later. Gloria's mother is angry and some people may say it's understandable. Let me tell you what she said. All the quotes of from Vanessa's mother are in Spanish. She speaks Spanish. So what I'm reading to you is the translations that I found online. So if anything is lost in translation, I'm very sorry about that, but these are official media translations. I took a little bit of Spanish in high school, but I don't speak it. Uh, no habla muy muy mal y yo soy chistosa. That's all I know. Okay, moving on, nobody cares. Quote, I feel there is a break in trust because me being her mother, I deserve to know, but they refuse to give me any details because it's an ongoing investigation. What I don't understand is how some information still reaches me, but by word of mouth by soldiers. It is not fair that they know and I do not. I pleaded with them from the beginning that they search for my daughter, that they close the base, and that they used the more than 30,000 soldiers to look for her, and they never did. I begged them to close the base and investigate room by room, barrack by barrack, building by building, and they didn't do it. Why now are they doing a show to look for my daughter? I want my daughter back alive. I want her alive because she entered Fort Hood alive. And if God forbid my daughter turns up dead, shut down this base. That girl is my life. I adore her. That's why I am fighting with nails and teeth until they return her and the guilty pay. So Fort Hood responded. They released a statement and they said that they conducted searches of the barracks, the base, the fields, the training areas, the lakes, and the trails all surrounding the area and within the area. The family attorney believes that the family is actually being kept in the dark. She said, quote, this is on a federal government base, a military base. There has to be more accountability. How can you not have these answers? The irony. You talk about all these gate checks and all these security checks, yet someone goes missing? 
this doesn't happen. And the fact that she wasn't even supposed to be working that day, she was off that day. Why did they call her in? This brings me to another super controversial point of this case. Why was Vanessa called into work when she was supposed to be off the exact same day that she went missing? Also, it is said that on that day, that same sergeant, her supervisor, was also working. You know, the one who was harassing her? Yeah, supposedly he was also working that day and they will not, the, the military will not tell the family who called her in, which sergeant, what was his name. And some people are now like, could it be that same sergeant who called her in that day because he planned to do something? I don't know. The family said that the military officials would not provide them with the name of the supervisor or the name of the witnesses or witness who saw Vanessa that day. I wonder if it's the same person. Meaning like, was the sergeant the one who witnessed her? The third weird thing that makes people think that there's a cover up here is the discrepancies in the timeline. The family has a timeline and the military has a timeline and they don't match. One of the discrepancies is whether Vanessa was actually in the barracks when the routine headcount was conducted. Now keep in mind, this headcount is going to be conducted by the sergeant, the supervisor, maybe the same person who was sexually harassing Vanessa. The reason why there's a controversy is because at first they told her, oh, she was last seen on this date and this time in the barracks. But then when they looked further into it, they found that the third or fourth check-in was actually falsified. In at least one, it was admitted the supervisor or sergeant who actually is supposed to account for everyone in the barracks submitted a report that everyone was accounted for when, in fact, now he's admitted that he did not see Vanessa. Suspicious. You see, there should have been three or four checks that day, but the third and fourth one now they're saying that they didn't actually see her. So the fact that the records showed that she was there during the third or fourth check means that they were falsified. This reminds me again of when I did my Epstein video and they said that they had done their rounds and then one of the security guards admitted that they actually falsified those rounds. Now we have the same situation. <sighs> Adding to these suspicions is the secrecy. There has been a lot of secrecy, which by the way is very, very common with the military. I feel like they're secretive about everything and that's just the way it is. But in this case, one would think that they would at least share certain information with the family. Devil's advocate, maybe they don't wanna share it because the family is talking to the media and they think it might compromise the investigation. I don't know. Like I mentioned, the cell phone. Remember how I said the cell phone was missing? Now, I could not verify this from more than one source. I only found one source and it wasn't even like a traditional media source. It was more like hearsay. So I don't know how true this is, but I think it's worth mentioning. There is talk that Vanessa's cell phone actually pinged outside of Fort Hood and that she was picked up by a white pickup truck or a white van and I'm not so sure 100% if that is actually true or not but it's something I heard and I thought I'll mention it with a disclaimer. So going back to the phone, Vanessa's mother Gloria said that the military actually pulled phone records from Vanessa's phone through Sprint, her cell phone provider, and it was from these phone records as well as credit card and security records that the military determined that Vanessa was last heard from at 11.30 a.m. But that also is up for debate. Why? Because of the nature of the last text message on Vanessa's phone. She texted, um, let me tell you, the text in question was sent from Vanessa's phone on the day she was last heard from, and she was notifying a supervisor of a serial number on one of the weapons that she was reviewing or working on. Now, the thing that people are saying is weird is that this is supposedly sensitive information that usually is not sent over text, and therefore people are speculating that 
maybe somebody else sent that text message pretending to be Vanessa to kind of throw people off of the timeline. The family lawyer goes on to say, quote, there's so many gaps and holes in what we learned today that I'm going to demand a congressional investigation for this family. We want to know what happened and who's covering up to who and why they are covering up. I feel like we're not going to resolve this down here. We need the higher ups now. Once all this was made public, protests started happening, has been going on for a while now in this country. They started protesting in front of Fort Hood and the protest organizers said, quote, it's unfathomable, oh my God, I can't talk. It's unfathomable that in a base such as this that is federally secure that they don't know who is coming in or going out or what happened to Vanessa. She did not just disappear into thin air. There was a push for uh, the FBI to take over the case because, you know, people don't trust certain organizations doing investigations on themselves anymore. They feel like we need a third party and that's when they call in the FBI. After weeks of protests, they invited Vanessa's mother, father, siblings, the lawyer, congresswoman, all the people involved to come to the military base and answer some questions and take a look around and basically they invited them to come. Now, Vanessa's mother did not go and she says the reason why she didn't go is because she saw footage of investigators searching for Vanessa in the river which in her mind made her think that, oh my God, they think she's dead. And she said she was ill, like six to her stomach and she couldn't take it and she couldn't go. After this meeting with officials, the lawyer and the congresswoman spoke out, they did a press conference and it was then where it was revealed that the US Army believed that, that there was definitely foul play regarding Vanessa's disappearance. Quote, this is from the congresswoman. They have now used the words foul play. They are convinced now that there is foul play involved and they are following all the leads they can. Also what was revealed and this, this by the way, this happened just very recently, like this past Tuesday. It was in this press conference that it was revealed that they knew the name of the sergeant in question, the one who had been doing the harassing and all this stuff, but they were not revealing the name to the public. But it's possible that the family and the lawyers and stuff know the name of this sergeant. So let's talk about those phone records from Sprint real quick. Once it was known that the military had gotten these phone records, Vanessa's family wanted the phone records, but the military didn't want to just hand them over. They said, you know what, bureaucracy, red tape, you need to go through the Freedom of Information Act. And when you go through that process and you actually get the approval, then and only then will we give you the phone records, which a lot of people are saying, why are they doing that? Why are they waiting for, basically they're waiting to be forced to give them the phone records. That makes it look really suspicious why aren't you just giving them this information? I don't know. Could be that they don't want to compromise the investigation. I don't know. Regarding the timeline, the congresswoman, she referred to it as a TikTok, not the app, but like a detailed timeline. They got more of a general overview of the timeline. And she also finds that to be very odd because she believes that they do have a detailed timeline. They're just not sharing it with them. So just to give you guys a bit of context, regarding uh, military cover-ups and sexual assault against women in the military. I found a annual report from the Pentagon regarding sexual assault of female soldiers. This is what I found. It is not good. Guys, it is not good. The prevalence of sexual assault has actually gone up since 2016, so the situation is getting worse. So this is a quote from the report. This increase is very troubling and shows that the Army sexual assault prevention strategies have not achieved their intended results. This case is reminding a lot of people of the Lavina Johnson case, which if you don't know, it is so brutal. I looked into it and honestly, it is quite possibly one of the most depressing things I've ever read. She was stationed in Iraq and she was found dead in her tent and the condition of her body and the results of the autopsy are so brutal. I don't even know if I can say them on YouTube without getting flagged. Um, she was, she was found dead. There was acid on her genitalia, which a lot of people believed was 
an attempt to destroy DNA evidence. Her nose was broken. She had tons, tons of bruises and cuts and things on her body. Yet, yet, her death was ruled a suicide. Oh, and she had a gunshot wound. Oh, and there were also bloody footprints outside of her tent. But it was ruled a suicide. And there's a lot of details because not only was she a veteran, but her dad was too. And the family asked for a lot of information regarding what happened to her because the officer or the soldier who notified them of her death, he let it slip that it was a suicide. And then he like backtracked, which raised red flags with the parents who then wanted more information. And they were given this very low quality, like photograph. Then they found out that there was actually a very high quality resolution CD, which had a bunch more information and evidence. And that was also withheld from them for a long time. Basically, long story short, it was a cover up and a lot of people are saying that this case is reminding them of that case. And a hashtag has emerged called uh, hashtag I am Vanessa Guillen, where women in the military are talking about their experience with sexual assault and how they either uh, were made fun of, laughed at, discouraged not to file a report. Like when they go and they talk to the officer, he discourages them from making it official. And some of them back down in that moment and then others follow through anyway, even though they're being discouraged and nothing happens. And in fact, they end up getting made fun of and harassed for complaining, which creates a culture where nobody wants to complain about being assaulted. And it's just really bad. <sighs> So now I want to tell you guys the latest updates that I found on this case. So the most recent thing that I found is that there are certain items that were found when they were searching in the river. Remember how I told you about that? They sent those items to a lab for testing. This is what they said. I think we found some things and they're doing some testing. If it has anything to do with it or not, I don't know. We were all pretty optimistic on it. We won't know for sure until the results come back from the lab. Yes, there is a reason we have been every place we have been. You can contact your local law enforcement agency if you have any information regarding Vanessa and where she could be. I pray that we find her alive. Things are not looking that way, especially with the river search and just everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Stay safe.